All right, it's time for some spice. There's this movement that I've been closely watching for the past couple of weeks that I find interesting because of its impact. So today, I want to take my own look into why I personally believe the Genshin boycotts mindset failed to challenge the Genshin status quo. Disclaimer, this video is meant to tackle the boycott itself and not the messaging of the representation and skin diversity. Instead, I want to talk about the movement, the means to an end. I believe that the people supporting this have their hearts in the right place, just not the right or optimal methods. I also won't be showing any names as much as possible because I don't believe in attacking individuals online for their opinions. That just seems counterintuitive. So, let's begin. Before the release of 4.8, Genshin fans took notice that the Natlin characters were relatively much paler than anticipated, especially from a nation near a volcano and a nation taking heavy inspirations from several indigenous cultures. A petition was created addressing these problems and extended that these weren't just for Genshin, but also for Honkai Star Rail and some other questionable iconography in Zenless Zone Zero. The main point is that majority of the characters are pale, and that those that are dark-skinned tend to be enemies, NPCs, or PCs with consistent lighting problems that makes it hard to determine their actual skin color. Personally for me, the fact that a lot of the cool dark-skinned characters in Genshin's that are beyond the shade of Kayumangi are enemies is pretty questionable. So these individuals state that the problem is cultural appropriation and whitewashing. These actions perpetuate harmful stereotypes and diminish the rich cultural heritage to indigenous communities. These practices not only misrepresent culture, but also contribute to ongoing marginalization and disrespect. Now what's my stance on the actual matter of Natlin? Well, this is something that I've already talked about when Sumeru came out. Now my personal opinion on this matter, and this is just my take on it, I won't fault anyone for disagreeing, is that I actually agree with the boycott's message and motivations, at least on a fundamental level. From a cultural perspective, I believe in cultural representations as a form of respect to the cultures that Genshin took these names, locations, clothes, dances, words, and so many other themes from. Not just for Natlin, but also for the other nations. From a design perspective, However, I've also been very open about my want for darker skin characters, even without the cultural beliefs that I hold. Certain characters benefit well from having darker palettes because darker canvases can highlight certain textures much better. Certain clothing colors also work really well with brown, cream, tan, and darker skin complexions just from a visual standpoint. And skin color also helps diversify Tibet as a continent altogether, because different skin colors can suggest difference in lifestyles, climates, geographical areas, and the fact that they live in a volcanic landscape. As someone that recently got news that there was volcanic smog in the south, I believe I can say something about this relationship. The point is that even if you don't believe that video game characters should be representative of real-life cultures, there is at least some objective merit when it comes to having more diverse skin tones just from a visual perspective. The point is that I actually really believed in the messaging of the boycott and what it stood for, which makes the fact that it was so poorly handled and perpetuated even more harmful attitudes from the player base all the more depressing. So let's look at the actual boycott. The change.org is the actual petition itself that is being used as a hallmark of progress for change and it's relatively vague. Petitions like this and call to actions usually have basic components, namely the actions that can be taken by the individual to show support that feels more concrete, representative, and macroscopic. This is because it's meant to rally people together for the cause, donate to charity, clean up an area, change your profile picture, etc. There's a reason why most movements require the audience to be a focal point of the solution because it's expected that they're the ones with both the motivation and the means to challenge the status quo. I am going to be repeating that term over and over again throughout this entire video. My biggest issue is that the boycott itself urges the wrong solution, or at least it's very limited. The solution post in the change.org states that they urge Mihoyo to engage with indigenous cultural consultants, which is another can of logistical business worms that I am unqualified to talk about, revise existing content to ensure accurate representation despite not providing what objective accurate representation may be, and commit to creating diverse and inclusive characters, which is pretty okay. But that's it. The solution itself is three bullet points. And the solution is simply phrased in a way that puts all of the action on Mihoyo, the offender. Now why is this a problem? Yes, it's normal to urge the offending party to make changes, but it's also customary to demand that this is what you will do if your demands are not met. Protest is a two-way street of force, where you are demanding change by imposing consequences. Concrete 
and dire consequences, removing retention, seizing advertising, no longer showing support, etc. Consequences that harm a company's bottom line. So when actually presenting the petition in Change.org in isolation, the question is, what do those 100,000 plus signatures mean? You need to be able to show what those people can actually do to make Hoyoverse listen. But there are other fundamental problems in how the boycott's messaging was handled. Number one, the misconception that free-to-play is the right way to go instead of outright quitting the game. Throughout the entire boycott, there is a lack of an actual call to stop playing Genshin. Instead, there is this horrible misconception that free-to-play is the right way, which I find absolutely horrendous. The full definition of boycott is the withdrawal from both commercial or social relations with something as a form of protest. However, the reason this boycott failed is because the mindset that, oh, we can just go free to play, actually dampened whatever impact they could have potentially had to force Hoyoverse to listen, which is with the game's statistics. Now, I'm going to dissect this from both a marketing perspective as a content creator and as a fan who's looking in. From a marketing perspective, no. This doesn't work because they underestimated the actual weight of free-to-play players and what they're indirectly contributing to. A game's bottom line isn't just from generated revenue, and thinking that that's the case is faulty. There is a wrong assumption that being free-to-play immediately means boycotting. The problem here is what if I was already free-to-play? All of Genshin's content can be accessed without payment. Does that mean by never buying anything, I was actually a boycotter all along? When the means of consequence is part of the status quo, then what are you actually threatening them with? Remember, if you can't instigate your cause from a social perspective, because Hoyoverse doesn't care, you hit it where it hurts, economically. But you don't, by playing the game. Any kind of audience that consumes your content for free isn't actually losing you money. Or at least, the sudden shift has to be so massive for you to actually gain a net loss completely. And this net loss has to be sustained, because if it was a one-time thing, creators believe that this can simply be recuperated with time and more effort without actually tackling the problem. <clears throat> free 5 star! The benefits of having a free audience is better than having no audience at all. Free-to-play players are actually some of the most taken care of demographics for any video games because you're still part of the economic cycle. And Genshin knows this. This is why a lot of their content is free in the first place. Free-to-play players are the ones actively engaging in content, which creates views, retention, popularity, and exposure. Genshin pays thousands upon thousands of dollars not to get you to necessarily spend, but to get you playing in the first place. And even to get you invested in the community, the characters, the nations, and somehow have that little voice to return to Genshin Impact. Expanding on this, there are other problems with only going free to play as a form of protest. First, any kind of player that shows any form of interest in the game can boost the game's marketability, regardless of the price paid. This goes for any kind of content. You talk about it, other people might listen and try it out for themselves. This boosts player retention and active monthly players. Numbers that are attractive to fans, whales, and investors. After all, why would you spend money on a game that people are calling dead? But it's not. In the eyes of advertising and metrics, your player base is alive and kicking. If anything, the fact that you have successfully trapped an audience in that is willing to play your game despite having clear problems with it means you have created a very, very loyal player base. A player base that's willing to still engage with your content despite everything bad that you could possibly do. This is what's being shown here from the attitude of thinking that boycotting equals free to play. Second, by going free to play, you are actually part of the demographic that is actively being sought out by Genshin. It's very important for them to keep the player here, even if you don't spend. This is why we have so many free events, live streams, contests, marketing gimmicks, hell, even real life booths and banners. So it's an incorrect assumption that you're quote unquote wasting server money when Hoyoverse knows that keeping players hooked and intrigued is an active form of marketing. Three, there's actually no concrete statistics that were provided that could prove that them going free to play is effective, especially if they were already low spenders. It also doesn't help that 4.8 is not exactly the banners to really make a difference, considering that a majority of them were reruns. So unless we have data here from across several banners and patches, there's no concrete proof that this ideology worked. Number four is that you can still absolutely talk about Genshin in a critical light without playing it. 
I personally didn't touch this game, and the only exception was 4.8 when Wanderer was on the screen, but I also don't play it every day and even spend on it anymore after I left. But it's possible for you to still talk about Genshin Impact's colorism topics without having a profile picture of a Genshin character, or just playing the game in general. Just talking about it on social media would be enough if you really wanted to just raise awareness. Now, from a fandom perspective, because this is a community issue, this attitude of simply going free to play wrongfully created an atmosphere of complacency for the player base, because people were still addicted to Genshin Impact and showed no change in their behavior, even if they were complaining about the game. Because there was a community acceptance that for some reason still engaging in Genshin was a safe and acceptable call. The attitudes that are invoking for change therefore felt disingenuous. It's like complaining about McDonald's on end but caved to buying a burger because I felt hungry, because it was cheap and something that I was already used to. On the other side, fans who see these individuals boycotting but still engaging Genshin could be deterred from joining the boycott. Why? Because isn't it kind of strange to see a Venti-only account talk about Hoyo vs. Colorism on one post, then keep gushing about Venti on another one? It creates this connection between your actions and your words, again dampening the actual merit of the boycott. You can't have your cake and eat it too, that's not how this works. Number 2. The Feasibility of the Solutions Posed now, the decision to go political over a fictional game is what's definitely rubbed a lot of people the wrong way, myself included. And I'm talking about this as a citizen from a country with direct beefs with China. Not because of the actual motion to call for politicians to take action, but rather because of the scope and feasibility of that action itself. Whenever you create a movement or a campaign, you want to understand the limitations of what you can actually achieve and the smaller steps that can be taken. Starting from an individual level, like sharing posts, signing a post, making supportive content, to grander, higher steps, like writing about it on established news outlets, making policies, and discussing it on an international level. And this goes back to the idea the change needs to start with you making the first step. This is the official post that circulated on Reddit on what to do and what not to do. The objective morality of it is hazy, but I can somewhat agree with some of its takes. My biggest gripe though are three main things. One is about the mention of trolls and racists actually kind of dampen the professionality of this whole thing. Second is the ignorance of what participating in Hoyo vs. Economic Flow actually is and the lack of a statement saying not to play the games. And third is the massive leap into contacting cultural ambassadors. Now playing devil's advocate, that could actually work in some countries where Hoyoverse actually has a stronger real-life influence. For example, in the Philippines, Hoyaverse is very well connected to a lot of facilities here that extend beyond their reach of just being a video game, rationalizing the thought that maybe these departments can reach out to them. But that's still a massive stretch, and again, because there's no concrete punishment that would incentivize even the tiniest bit of actions besides human empathy, how are you going to pose this as actually having priority over national problems? Interestingly enough too, the original of this post states local politicians, which I'd really, really rather not. Nevertheless, understanding the feasibility of your case and presenting it in a substantive way is crucial to an effective movement. Actually, I don't completely disagree with the contacting of local politicians. If and only if this issue had the proper growth and transition to actually be worthy of international political attention. You need to earn that notoriety. Or else, just like what's happening now, you're reaching too far into the stars, my friend. Number 3. The place of Genshin Impact as a cultural representation One thing that boycotters failed to really tackle is the microscopic positionality of Genshin in this entire conversation as opposed to its macroscopic positionality. Some people are asking, so what if Genshin Impact doesn't have cultural representation? Is it its responsibility to even have cultural representation in the first place? And is it in the creator's responsibility to have that representation, even if you do take inspiration from other cultures? Now, the actual morality and objective truth of that statement is up to you to decide. But I want to tackle positionality anyway. Positionality basically refers to where one is located in relation to their identity statement, and usually reflects the creator's identity as an influence to what they create. So for example, if I'm a Filipino, no matter how objective I try to act, 
I will always have a lens to view the content I consume and content that I create with. So I would probably have more Western views, I would probably have the views of someone from a third world country, etc. That's why it's always important to be clear where your positionality is. This is important because Hoyoverse is a Chinese company, which doesn't really subscribe to the same ideologies that Western audiences have. Is that a good thing? No. But it's an important part of the research that is required to make your boycott more substantive. Instead of just looking at Hoyoverse as a video gaming company, you need to understand the contexts and cultures that it's cultivated based on its identity, as well as the relationship to the other cultures. When it comes to skin tone, we need to understand why they have such a preference to light skin in the first place, and why they don't feel the need to show darker skin despite taking from indigenous cultures. There may be something socially that could be used here, and by finding that reason and by finding that research, you can make your boycott way more substantive. That's why a lot of people have commented that Hoyo vs. Colorism could be based on both the Chinese market and their own ideologies, as well as their lack of nuance or care on the situation. To them, it is a status quo and they're simply repeating a formula that's worked for years. So by actually challenging the positionality of Hoyoverse itself, you can expand the argument of why cultural representation is needed by a Chinese company. Is it going to be perfect? Absolutely not! But it is an important point to take when you talk about cultures. Number 4. Why the other audiences didn't care When starting a movement, you need to be able to convince the least likely supporters to actually see your side. That's the harder part of any kind of activism movement, getting people to care if that wouldn't normally otherwise. On a social level, not only does this mean your activism gains more engagement and support, but it also builds camaraderie between both affected and unaffected parties. This also allows an expansion of resources that would have otherwise been unavailable to one party but accessible to the other, whether it's money, power, privilege, attention, etc. While this is a cultural issue, it's also important to respect where Genshin lies in the economic sphere. Therefore, a boycott like this merits well if you can show that a lot of diverse people care and are willing to seize their support of Genshin. This challenges the status quo further because that means the issue has transcended a specific collective of individuals and is now broadening to a mass audience. This is especially important in Genshin because it's a global market, so you would want a global issue. Therefore, it's always in the best interest of activists to not antagonize bystanders and people that are otherwise complacent of the situation. Instead, educate them and try to convince them that what you're doing is for the betterment of people who were wronged. The action is to rally the community, not pit it against each other, because we're supposed to save that energy for the cause. Unfortunately, this didn't happen. Chalking up all of the people who didn't support you as nothing but racists and trolls actually does more harm than good when you're doing a movement. Not only are you furthering the boundary between supporters and non-supporters, but you're also creating a versus statement and potentially painting yourself as a target. You're also perpetuating an air of hostility. Sure, there are some in the demographic that are actually vile and vicious that are only motivated by self-actualizing agendas, but some of them actually have gratifying reasons why they don't challenge Genshin's status quo. Some believe it's just a game, some don't believe that skin color should be the end-all be-all of representation, and some believe that connecting fictional characters to real-life people is wrong. Are their opinions invalid? Not necessarily. So why not tackle these concerns and disconnections by actively trying to justify your case of representation and providing them with substantive answers instead of just dismissing them. Sure, it won't convince everyone, especially not those who are very adamant against you, but you still have to try. This is why we have comments that say 100,000 supporters is a lot, but contextually in a game with millions of concurrent players, it's nothing. Especially since those supporters are still allegedly playing the game.